Good morning, good morning. Good morning, TWC family, friends, brothers and sisters, and welcome to TWC's virtual service. My name is Associate Pastor William Hall, and I have the honor of bringing forth the message of God this morning. But before we get into that, I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Please share, please invite your family, your friends into this worship experience, into the message of God that's going to be delivered today. Here at TWC, our vision and mission is connecting people back to God and humanity. So come on in the room. Come on in the room. Let's let's divulge the word of God together this morning. I am so excited about today's word. I'm so excited for what the Holy Spirit is doing, the movement of God, the 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 uplifting of, of wisdom, the up the uplifting and, and impartation of knowledge is, is, is very rampant right now. It's going around for God's people, God's children, which of all of us who have who have joined, who have holding hands, who are attached to that love of God to know how to carry out in purpose, how to carry out in love and how to carry out taking care and upholding one another, one another's burden. So welcome, welcome, welcome again. My name is Associate Pastor William Hall and the first family is sharing in that love right now. So I'm going to be sitting in our Bishop Stead and our Dr. Wendell Dandridge's stead as I deliver the word of God this morning, okay? All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Like I said, I'm, I'm really excited about today's word. Today's foundational uh, text comes from Matthew 16 and 24. Uh, the, today's foundational text comes from Matthew 16 and 24. And I, I, without further ado, let's just jump right into it right now. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, before we get into the reading of the, the text of God, before we get into reading of the word of God, I want to set the foundation. I want to set the president as to why Jesus has come to make this statement to the disciples that we're going to read here in Matthew 16 and 24. Now, prior to him making this statement, prior to him getting to what needed to be said, therefore this message and this intentionality had to be shown was him rebuking Peter. Okay. Now, Jesus has went on to, to meditate and spend time with his father, to spend time with our father, to, to pray, to make sure he's in alignment for what God has planned for his life. And as he comes back down from meditating and reading um, in isolation, uh, he tells his disciples, hey, I'm going to go, uh, we're going to go on to Jerusalem. Now, in this particular Moment in time at this at this at this time, I'm going to be fulfilling the prophecy that has already been told to you all in this prophecy. I'm going to go through imaginable pain. I'm going to 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 have to deal with unheard of hurt because of this prophecy and of this need for me to sacrifice myself in order for you to for you all to have salvation. Now, in him explaining this, Peter has a response where he does not attached to that. He does not understand the purpose of why this has to be done. So let's jump right into Matthew 16 and 24. And the word of God reads, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the word of God that has already been delivered. Thank you for your word that is being made flesh daily, hourly, in every minute of our lives, Father God, because we choose to meditate on your word day and night. We choose to let your word take root within us so that it may bear fruit, fruit that will multiply, multiply throughout our assignments, throughout the people that we touch, so that they may know that the love of God resides in us. They may be able to see your spirit shone on our faces, Father God, so they can be in contact with you. So we say thank you for the word that's going to be delivered this day. We say thank you for your son that has given us the example. And we say thank you for the Holy Spirit that's going to resonate within us as our helper. Amen. Now, the word said, if any of you wants to be my follower. So I'm going to break down this scriptural text because it's very important. Even in this, 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 this sentence, in this one statement, they, I can't divulge everything that's going to help us understand what the topic of the word is today. What the topic of the message is today is how to follow 
while leading. How to follow while leading. Now, in most of our lives, you know, especially in, in the pastoral uh, uh, title, in the pastoral hat, in the pastoral calling, this is very a very difficult alignment to have. I would say it's, it's very difficult to make sure that you're in the right place, that you should be with God so that you may be able to hear his voice and be able to cascade that voice to everybody that's assigned to you. Now, that's usually what it's attached to. It's usually attached to a pastor. That's usually what it, this message would mostly resonate with. But I'm going to challenge you to think outside of that box because all of us have an assignment. Like the word tells us the spirit of God has been given to us and part imparted into us. So we may have something to to be of benefit to everybody. So that means that everybody has a level of discipleship. That means that everybody has a calling and a purpose on their life in order to fulfill what God has already given them. Through all the pain, through all the hurt, through all throughout any experience that you may have in life, it has purpose because it's ultimately going to attach to why God has designed you and orchestrated your life in this way and to the people that are assigned to you so that you may be able to help give them liberation through what God has given you through the gift of the spirit. OK, but like I said, this it usually resonates with how to lead while following by being a pastor. But now let's let's think outside the box when you're a manager. Let's say you're a manager or you're a business owner. You have multiple people that are attached to you. Their, their careers, their lives, their family lives are attached to your leadership style, your managerial expertise. And in that particular case, you want to make sure that you're in alignment and doing the right thing that you don't fail anybody, that you don't let anyone down, that you, as a result of something that you did, somebody has to pay the consequence of it, which resonates in their home and their lives. OK, let's take it a step further. Maybe you're a father over a household. You have a family, you have multiple kids and you're trying to lead this family by also, while also listening to the word of God, while also meditating on the word of God, even in your own lives. And it becomes difficult because you're so afraid of making mistakes. You're so afraid of something going awry, something going wrong as a result of your decision. And it becomes difficult. So you're still trying to understand this concept of leading while following God, of leading while following God. So this is why the message is today. How do we lead while following? And Jesus says in, the mul in a multitude of ways throughout the Bible, throughout his life, throughout the parables that we're able to see through the scriptures like, hey, I'm giving you the how to to doing this. So we are going to go through through a few steps, not all of the steps, not everything that is needed to be learned or to be added unto you in order for you to really understand this idea of leading while following. But we just want to go through three simple keys that the Holy Spirit has resided and rested upon me. So I'm going to give them to you. Okay. Now I'm going to add on to that. Maybe you're not a father of a household. Maybe you're a mother. Maybe you're a single mother in a situation right now in a family construct where you're the one parent, you're the, the, the father, the mother and the father in this situation. You're trying to see it through. You're trying to navigate through life without making a mistake because you ultimately know it falls all on you. You ultimately know that those kids or that kid is dependent upon you. They're relying on you. And because of this pressure, it causes anxiety. Because of this pressure, it causes a sometimes lapse in confidence. So you don't always feel like you're making the right decision. But this word today, I promise to you, is going to be a blessing because it's going to show you, it's going to teach you how where to go, not only where to go, but a few a three simple things in order to understand how to lead your family while following God. Amen. Matthew 16 reads again, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow and follow me. So let's break this down. The first point, if big point. Now, when we talk about semantics, we have to read the word in its fullness. So the word reads, if any of you wants to be my follower, if now the connotation that if leads the context that if puts into this statement is there's a choice. There's a choice. There is a choice that you must make 
in order to be in right alignment with God, in order to hear him clearly, in order to understand one of the principles of how to lead while following is to make the choice that you're going to be attached to whatever it is, that you're going to take responsibility for your decisions. You're going to take and look in the wholeness and the fullness of how this life is going to orchestrate into your purpose. Okay. Into your purpose. So that choice, that choice also brings upon this. And this is the first point. The first point is it indicates intentionality. It indicates intentionality. That choice, that that if being implanted into this statement means that you have to be intentional. That once you make a choice, it's time for you to be intentional about what you're going to do next or how you're going to carry your life or the things that you're going to do or the word that you're going to attach to or the voice that you're going to listen to or what it is that is placed on your heart that you're going to carry out. How are you doing it with intentionality? OK, I'm going to show you another way in the word that through the life of Jesus, we see this intentionality. We're going to go to Luke 6, 12 and 14. Luke 6, 12 and 14. And I implore to you, I implore anyone that's listening this morning, anyone that's going to view this message, take notes. Take notes. You want to go, you want to go back and read through everything that's going to be covered and given through the Holy Spirit this morning. Okay? You want to take notes. Luke 6 and 12 reads: One day, soon after Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, he prayed to God all night. And at daybreak, he called together all his disciples and chose. 12 of them to be apostles. You know, a lot of times you say, okay, well, Jesus only had 12 disciples. Jesus only had 12 apostles. Apostles, But the text that I just read to you said Jesus had more than 12. He had more than 12 disciples. For those of you that know that, you, you, I didn't need to tell you that. But for those of you who didn't know, he only had 12. Let me bring it home for you, okay? One thing that I want you to understand that in the world that we live in today, especially with social media, it looks as if you have more friends and more pe people that you can uh, attach to or that you can account for or be that count on, I would say, or depend on, I would say, than you think. Only because of this advent of social media. So you have tons of followers, multiple people coming in and they're responding to your posts, people that you met in college here, there at a job or whatever the case may be. So it makes it seem like you have more support than you actually do. But what is being described here that it was intentional for Jesus only to choose 12. Only to choose 12. Because what I'm here to tell you also is that all those people that are attached to you, even the people that you see day in and day out, they don't always have a purpose in your life. So some of those are here for a season. And after that season is done, after their reason is being fulfilled, then they will leave your life. So in this particular text, what God is showing, what God is showing through the life of Jesus, what Jesus has shown through us, our example is, hey, I can't take all of you all with me because I only can take who is purpose to be attached to me, who is assigned to me in my life. That, that includes Judas. That includes Peter, who I like to call Peter Popoff. Because just as in the scripture that I've read and, and the foundation of this text in Matthew 16 to 24, Peter never really attached to the purpose of Christ very well. It was always this apprehension of, hold on, you're Jesus Christ. The things that you're telling us that you're going to go through in Jerusalem, you don't have to do that. What are you talking about? You must be losing your mind. And Jesus said, lead thee behind me, Satan. So how many people in your life that are attached to you? That are there for a purpose to remind you that you have something to do, that you have a purpose to fulfill, that even though you're trying, maybe they're the naysayers, maybe they don't really attach to your dream like Peter didn't attach to Christ's purpose. He didn't attach to the, to the prophecy, even after spending time with him. Who do you have around you that is purpose to remind you, hey, maybe you don't have to do that. But then hold on, the Holy Spirit it, it, it drops in your mind and you're like, wait a minute. You can't get me off course for what God has already set forth for me. So I'm going to need you to lead thee behind me, even though I know that you might be my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my, my even my mentor, or even my boss or my close friend. That I can't let you remove me from where it is that God has taken me 
for where it is that I know that I have to go. I have to fulfill the purpose on my life. And for some of you all, you have to take that stance with all the people around you. Because one thing that I want to tell you, and, I, and usually this statement is 5%. But what I'm here to tell you is that you are at least 10 to 15 percent of everyone that is surrounded by that is in your inner circle. So y'all share the same attributes. They attach to, to your spirit. They rub your spirit in good and bad ways. In this particular message, as it says in Luke, that Peter rubbed Jesus the wrong way. Because Jesus had to recognize, oh, there's something else in operation right now. And I have to shut that down. I have to shut that down. So moving into our first point, which is intentionality, that you can't take everyone with you. That everyone that you have in your circle maybe is not supposed to be there because maybe they're not a good influence. But what I can tell you for those who are attached to you, who stay attached to you, there's a purpose, whether good or bad for you to fulfill your purpose in life. So let's take the, the overall, the overarching view as to why these people are around you and the intentions that they have for you and the intentions that you have in the relationship with them. Amen. Be intentional. That's how you lead while following. You're intentional about your circle. You're intentional about who you allow to speak in your life. You're intentional about the word that you read. You're intentional about upholding the word of the Lord. Amen. First point, intentionality. Moving forward. This is our second point. The word reads, you must give up your own way. Your own way. Your own way. You must give up your own way. Your own way, your own way, your own way. That means you have already come up with an, an idea of what it is that you want to do. But everybody knows the saying. Everybody knows the word where it says, you know, tell, the, one, the one way you can make God laugh is to tell him your plans. And to be completely honest with you, the one way to, to stop you from attaching to all the unimaginable things that God has for you is to only carry out your plans. What you think you want to happen, how you think you want things to go, because I guess ultimately you're God in your life because you think that that you are able to manifest whatever it is that you have on your heart because you want it to be that way. But what we don't realize that in this thought process is settled in self-centeredness it's settled that we in a lot of times won't be a benefit to everybody else and we won't be able to gain all the things that are going to be added unto us by seeking the kingdom of god because we're so settled in ourselves so what jesus is saying in his statement is you have to set aside what you think you know for for the higher thought process for the alignment for what god has for you and that second point is transformation in order to get out of your own way, you have to transform. But how do we transform, ladies and gentlemen? How do we transform, brothers and sisters? What does the word tell us about this transformation? A transformation. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2 reads, And do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed progressively, changed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove to yourself. You may prove to yourself what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. His plan and his purpose, a purpose for you is good, acceptable, and it's perfect. I'm not telling you right now not to dream. What I'm saying is to have your dreams align with what God has for you. I'm telling you to be on the right handed up. The, the right hand side of God, where he will uphold you with his righteous right hand to keep you moving in a straight and narrow path, not in the path that you want to go, not in the path that's going to end in heart, heartache, heartbreak, resentment, fear, all of these negative emotions because we're not centered in to this alignment with God that gives us a peace that passes all understanding despite the circumstance that we're in, despite what we're going through. And the only way for us to get to that, that point, in order, in order for us to get to that alignment with God, to really get to that type of peace, that type of hope, that type of building of faith that builds patience, is for us to be transformed. See, we can't be consumed by all these things in the world that we live in. 
If we're consumed by worldly thought, we will only be fulfilled by worldly things. What I'm telling you right now is to transform your mind to, to see higher, to understand that there is a kingdom thought process in this walk with Christ. There's a kingdom thought process in order to fulfill your purpose. There's a kingdom way of transforming yourself in order for you to be giving everything else to be added unto you. In order for God to give you a hope in a future. In order for you to be able to see that hope in the future, you have to get out of your own way. So what I'm telling you right now is this is something that pastors go through, bishops, apostles. I don't care what title that you have. It doesn't matter what title that you hold. You're going to struggle with getting out of your own way and getting on board with God's way. Because that's the only thing that matters. See, what you're seeking after in order to lead while following is for you to seek his face day and night. In order for you to request and ask and knock so that he may be able to respond to your request. Because at the end of the day, he is our father. And we can't be conformed to this world. This world will take you under. This world will have you in a place lost with feeling like you have no direction to go in. This world will have you in the wilderness 50% in and not knowing that you're halfway out. That's what this world does to you. But what I'm saying is what our God does for us is to give us this transformation that gives us a higher height of thought, that gives us an understanding of our purpose, that puts us in right standing with him to understand, hey, I'm going to be able to carry out my, my assignments because of the gifts that you've given me. I'm going to be able to multiply everything that you allow my hands to touch because of the word that I follow. See, without understanding that who God is and who you belong to, you can't transform totally. So what I'm telling you right now, that transformation is imperative to your walk with Christ. That, that, that it can't be emphasized enough that you let go of these worldly things. That social media doesn't have the same influence over you in the same manner. That you be transformed that so that your discernment may be able to point out that brother, sister, cousin, mother, father, manager, friend, mentor, whomsoever to say, hey, I can't attach to what you're saying right now because that's not what God told me. See, I know what God told me. And if I if I haven't went through this level, this process of transformation, I wouldn't be able to rebuke the devil that's trying to work through you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I know you have purpose in my life. Yes, I know you have a reason to be here because you're still attached to me. But what I'm saying right now is I have a personal prophecy and a personal relationship with God. And that only came through transformation. And that only came through meditating on his word day and night. So what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, it's time for that transformation to take place. You cannot be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to see, for, see to have sight to have a vision, to have a discernment, to have a wisdom of what God has planned for your life, for the steps that he's ordering. Maybe you don't see it all the way through, but you understand what that next step is. And it's always through transformation, through meditating on his word day and night. Amen. That's the second point, transformation. The third point, take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Personally, what I would like to say is when every time I've read this scripture, every time I've heard this scripture or somebody has recited this scripture in a service or what may have you, the first thing out of everything that is being said, and you know, you go through step one, the first part of the statement, and you're like, okay, I understand that if I want to follow Christ, this if I must make a choice. OK. You must give up your own way. OK, I must die to my flesh daily. There's a part of me that has to die daily in order for me to fulfill what it is that is in or attached to my purpose. In order for me to fulfill my purpose, I have to die to my flesh day and night. That means I have to die to all these worldly things that are in my heart, that are in my mind, that I speak through my mouth. Those things have to die. The part that takes the cake for me is take up your cross. 
For those of you who have seen the Passion of the Christ, for those of you who have read what took place during Jesus' crucifixion, that entire process of reprimand, that entire process of going through the course and, and the pain that he had to suffer on our behalf, it comes back home. Like it just hits me like a ton of bricks and I'm sure it hits you too. And it says, take up your cross. One thing I want to ensure you that you have the power to do that Christ has shown us that in the flesh, we have the power to take up our own cross. Just like in the word, Christ had tried to have that cup removed from him. But he still took up his cross. So what I'm telling you that what is being said right now to take up your cross and follow him means to attach to your purpose. Your purpose is found through taking up your cross, whatever that cross may be, whatever it is that you have to experience, whatever it is that you have to go through, grow through, learn. It's a part of you taking up your cross, taking ownership, taking responsibility for what it is that God has placed on your spirit that has asked you to carry out that one nagging thing that the Holy Spirit just won't let you go. He, he won't let you let go of it. It's attached to your purpose. That illness that you've been living through, living with your entire life that hasn't taken your life is a part of your purpose. Those financial struggles that you're going to make it through are part of your purpose. That grief that you had to experience, that's a part of your purpose. That loss that you had to make it through is a part of your purpose. When you had to sleep in your car, that was a part of your purpose. When you had to scavenge for food, that was a part of your purpose. When you had to go through that dumpster, that was a part of your purpose. Take up your cross. Because everything, the good and the bad, is attached to your purpose. What does the word say? Romans 12 and 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give up your bodies to God. Because of all he has done for you, let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind that he would find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. For those of you who don't know what your purpose to do, for those of you who are still seeking after your purpose, who are a little confused if you're living in your purpose, one thing I want to assure you of is your purpose is attached to more than just you. It's not just about you. Your purpose is attached to the relationships that you have on this earth, the good and the bad. Because in those relationships, you have an opportunity to be the church. In those relationships, you have the opportunity to display, display the love of God. To display the actions and the behavior and the discernment that God has placed through the spirit in you. To be able to say, as in Colossians, whatever it is that God has given you through the spirit that is of benefit, you're able to give it back. All these things attach to your purpose. So just as Paul has told us in the New Testament that despite anything that may be going on, going on, he's going to be content in it. I challenge you right now that despite what's going on in your life, that they're to see the purpose in it, to find the contentment in it, to find the peace that passes all understanding in it. Because just like the word tells us, there are seasons. And so what I'm saying right now is don't get stuck, don't get stagnant in moving towards your purpose as you're doing the other two things. If you've made the choice, as you, after you've been intentional in order to attach to your purpose to continue to move forward because everything that you are experiencing is a part of your purpose. Colossians tells us that Jesus has already come to die and died for us. And just like in this word within Romans that we should give ourselves in return. That because of giving ourselves in return, that removes all the clouds. That remo removes all the confusion. It gives you a clarity and sense of mind as to the direction that God wants you to move in your life. 
It, it gives you a sense of what your purpose is going to be. And if you can't find that purpose, if you haven't attached to what your purpose is just yet, continue to live, continue to fight for, continue to stay grounded in what God has already given you because it's enough for the time and the season that you're in right now. So that means that despite of how it may look, despite the how you don't attach to it, how confusing and just erratic your life may be right now, that as long as you're set right within God's word, within trying to fulfill it, that your season has purpose. That you must give joy in all things because in being grateful, you're able to learn. Without that gratitude, it won't change your attitude. And you need to be transformed because we just talked about that, right? You need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you can't look at things the same way. That means you can't approach things the same way. That means you can't have the same behavior that you used to have yesterday. Despite five, ten years ago, Yesterday, you should be better today than you were yesterday. You should be gaining and growing every day. Every minute, every hour should be another step in the right direction. No matter what you're going through, another step in the right direction. Because the one thing that you can control is your perspective. And God gives perspective through his word. And through his word, as your perspective begins to change, as your, as your heart begins to be liberated from all those pains and hurts, resentments and things that you hold on to that are so negative, that keeps you moving in the, right, the wrong direction, that keeps you down, he's able to break those apart through that transformation so that you may attach to your purpose. Because one thing that I can tell you is your pain has purpose because it's able to deliver and liberate somebody through the, from their bondage. So you can't tell me, you can't tell God, you can't tell the Holy Spirit, you can't tell our brother Christ that your pain don't have, doesn't have purpose. What God is telling you right now is anything that you're going through, it has purpose. The good and the bad. So be grateful. Show joy. Be transformed. Be intentional. Understand that what you're going through has a purpose. Because in all three of those things, you're learning how to lead while following Christ. How to lead your family while following the truth. See, once you do that transformation, once you're in the right, right standing with God, once you're in alignment with God, because he knows you're not going to be perfect. But where is your heart set? Where is your heart set? Is it with him or with the world? Is it with him or in vanity? Is it with him or in money? Where is it settled? Because he, 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 he's Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider. So if, if you're totally settled in him being your provider in every single way in your life, why are you allowing idolatry, narcissism, self-centeredness, a sense of mind of vainness to remove you from being able to attach to your purpose and then your purpose being able to lead those who are assigned to you as you follow the word of God. Don't allow it to do it, brothers and sisters. Don't allow the enemy and these principalities to, to put you in a construct of bondage while you're living and, and, and carrying out this journey we call life. And I'm going to end on this. John 10 and 11 reads, I am the good shepherd. The, shep the good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. What are you willing to sacrifice? Jesus gave his life for our sins. And for all of us, God is not asking that in return. But what God is asking is for us to be intentional about his relation our relationship with him. For us to be transform transformative and our walk with him, that we do not stay the same as we're taking each and every step going forward, moving forward and displaying the spirit that he's already given us and detaching from anything this world has told us so that we may have the truth resonate within us. How are we being transformative? 
And how are we seeking our purpose? How do we see purpose? How do we compartmentalize that purpose? How do we process purpose because of our transformation? See, all of these things should drive us to a moment where we understand that this is bigger than just you and I. See, the one single person cannot do enough. See, I can touch thousands. I can touch thousands. But together, brothers and sisters, as we are transformed, as we're intentional, as we seek our purpose, we can touch, we can touch tens of thousands together. We are the body of Christ. We are the church, not in the four walls, but in our daily lives, in our households, while we at work, while you're on the way to work, while you're at the grocery store, while you're at the theme park, while you're on vacation. It doesn't matter where you are, while you're at the club, while you're at the, 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 the trap house, wherever you are, the spirit of God still resonates in you. And so what I'm telling you, that despite where you are confused or there might be some uh, uh, just total disregard of understanding just how that you continue to carry out leading while following. I want you to understand, too, that it's vitally important that you understand what has been said this morning, because if you don't get anything else, you have to understand how to, to lead while following in your own life. Because you have to go to God for your own soul salvation. See, nobody else can go there for you. Nobody else can stand at the gate with you. I'm telling you it's bigger than you. But right now, for this day, for this moment, for this purpose, for this time, understand how it's important for you to do it for your own soul salvation. I hope you all got something out of word of God this morning. I hope that it resonates with you. I, I, I pray and I declare that this was a blessing to somebody that's going to receive this word this morning. That somebody's going to hear this message maybe another day. So I implore, be intentional, be transformative, and be purposeful. And seek after your purpose. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the word that has been given on this morning a progressive word, a transformative word, an intentional word, a ground soul filling seed planting word that will build and bring forth fruit in the days to come. Maybe in this minute, maybe at this hour, maybe tomorrow, maybe next month, maybe next week. It does not matter, Father God, because they've heard your word, they've heard your voice, they've felt your love, Father God. So because of that attachment, because of that sense, because of knowing who you are in their life, Father God, allow their steps to continue to be ordered as I know that they will, but allow them and give them the wherewithal and the push to continue to take those steps despite of the circumstances and the situation they may be living in. Allow their situation and their circumstance to bring forth a discernment that shows them what the purpose is for what they're going through in their life, Father God. Have them understand that it's just bigger than them. That as we go through on this, this journey of how, learning how to lead while following, this is only just a few steps. That you will fill in the blanks. That it's always an open-ended open -ended test regarding you, Father God. Because we know that you're here to give us a hope in the future. And despite what we're going through, it won't harm us. Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. <clears throat> Again, I hope you got something out of the word tonight. We would love here at TWC to attach to you to hear from you. Please visit us at www.twcatl.org if you seek to give as a result of this message or just to give to be of to contribute to our philanthropy and humanitarian efforts, please visit us on the website. Please, if you would like to just join us in those efforts, please visit us on the website. And I hope you have a prosperous, blessed, and wholly purposeful week. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed, and great week. Your pastor, your associate pastor, William Hall.